This video will go over how to update an Analyte list for a method in your FUDSCAM EQAP. We go over this topic more conceptually in our EQAP Creating Multiple Analyte Lists video, linked in the description. This video is a more technical guide on updating the three final tabs of the EQAP once new Analyte lists are added. Go to Tools, Data, EQAP Setup. Choose your project. For this example, we've already set up our method up through the Pal Associations tab, so we will start at the Analyte Limits tab. For more information on the previous tabs, please refer to our EQAP Tutorials playlist, linked in the description. On the Analyte Limits tab, select the Analysis method to edit. For this example, we'll choose SW8270C Soil. On this tab, we can delete unnecessary analytes and add needed ones. First, let's delete any analytes that we don't need. Check the boxes next to the unneeded analytes, then click Delete. Note that in other tabs of the EQAP, deletion is permanent. However, if you delete an analyte by mistake on this tab, you can contact support for help restoring it. Next, let's add new analytes and surrogates. To add analytes, make sure the drop-down towards the top is set to Add New Analytes, then choose the number of analytes to add. For this example, we will choose 5. Click Add. We can see the new rows are blank. We can click directly on one of the numbers in the Analyte column and set it to the new Analyte. We will add fluoranthine, fluorine, naphthalene, nitrobenzene, and phenol. Click Save Changes. We can also add new surrogates. We will change the Add New Analytes drop-down to Add New Surrogates and select the number of rows to add. In this case, one row is sufficient. Click Add. Like before, we will click on the number in the Analyte column and set our new surrogate. In this case, we will use Phenol D5. Then click Save Changes. We can see that the PAL source, PAL value, project quant goal, and lab limits are all blank for our new records. We will need to fill these out. The PAL source can be set by hand or by reassociating the PAL and method on the PAL Associations tab. Note that doing so will overwrite the PAL source, PAL value, and project quant goal fields for this method. For more information, please refer to our EQAP PAL Associations tab video, linked in the description. In this case, we will set the PAL sources by hand. Let's click on the PAL source column to sort and bring all our blank rows to the top. Select the blank rows and use the field to replace option to choose PAL source. Select the PAL you want to apply to the analytes. Click Replace, then click Save Changes. After saving, the PAL value will update as long as the selected PAL source has a value for that analyte. If you already set up Project Quant Goal rules on the PALS tab, then the Project Quant Goal column will update as well. For more information, please refer to our EQAP PALS tab tutorial, linked in the description. The Project Quant Goal column can also be edited by typing into the cells or using the Field to Replace option. The LOQ, 
LOD, and DL for the new analytes should be provided by the lab. We could fill them out by typing into the cells, using the field to replace option, or using the export. For this example, we'll use the export. In the upper right, set the dropdowns to Export Analyte Limits, then click Go. The system will display a warning that you can only edit certain fields in the spreadsheet. Be careful not to add or remove any analytes from the spreadsheet. Similarly, be careful not to add or remove analytes from the eQAP before you have had a chance to reimport this file. Mismatches like these will cause the reimport to fail. For this example, we will only edit the LOQ, LOD, and DL columns. Open the CSV file. All analytes for all methods for the project will be listed, and can be edited here all at once. You can sort the rows and filter without affecting the reimport. Let's filter to find our desired list, in this case the SW8270C soil list. We can fill in the blank LOQ, LOD, and DL fields with the limits provided by our lab. We will quickly enter some sample data. Once we've finished editing, we will save the file as a CSV. It is important to save it in this format. Back in the eQAP, change the dropdown from Export to Import. Click Go and import the file. Once imported, select the method again on the Analyte Limits tab. We can see that the limits are populated. This tab has been completely updated. Let's go to the Holding Times tab next. Select the Analysis method to edit. In this case, our SW8270C soil method. On this tab, any new analytes that we added are automatically given the same holding times as the original analytes. However, in some cases the holding times may be blank. We can populate the hold times by typing into the fields or by selecting the rows we want to update and using the field to replace option. The units can also be updated to either hours or days. The rejection factor calculates the gross hold time for the project. Some projects do not use gross hold times, such as those using national functional guidelines. In these cases, the rejection factor would be 1. In other projects, the gross hold times may be 200% of the holding time, in which case the rejection factor would be 2. Note that the gross hold times must be the same for all analytes across all methods. Therefore, we will make sure our rejection factors match. Once we've finished editing, click Save Changes. Let's go to the Analyte Criteria tab. Select the method. We can see that the new analytes have associated QC elements, but we will need to fill out the limits. We recommend using the export to update them in Excel to save time. In the upper right, select Export, Analyte Criteria, Go. Open the CSV file. Let's filter to find our method and matrix. We can sort the QC Elements tab from A to Z to get all of the like elements together. This helps us see which values are typically used for an element and copy them down to any blank rows. 
For example, we can see the BLKE element is filled with zeros for several analytes. We can click and drag to select the last populated row for BLKE along with the blank rows. Then press Ctrl D to downfill the blank rows so they all match. The shortcut helps us fill in the blank rows quickly. We could go back to edit manually as needed. Once we've finished editing, we will save this file as a CSV. Back in the EQAP, change the dropdown to Import Analyte Criteria. Click Go and import the file. Once imported, select the method again on the Analyte Criteria tab. We can see that the limits are populated. Once we update the QC units using the Field to Replace option, the EQAP will be completely updated for our new analytes. Don't forget to subscribe to the FUDSCAM YouTube channel for more tutorial videos. All of the tutorials and playlists mentioned during this video are linked in the description below. Lastly, if you have questions or comments, feel free to contact us at fuds.support at synectics.net. Thank you.